Hello and welcome to Money Magpie podcast. I'm Jasmine Bertles, founder of Money Magpie. And today I'm going to be talking to a fascinating person called Richard Crow, who's a mortgage broker, but also he teaches money management. And his teaching is all based on his own experience, based on the psychology of money. So I'm hoping that we can all get some great tips from him. Hello, Richard. Hi, Jasmine. How are you? Good, thank you. Lovely to have you. Thanks. So, oh, thank you. As I was saying, you started your money management course really particularly out of your own experience. So, give us a bit of a background of how you got into, you know, broking and money mortgage broking, but also money management and uh, what your journey was. Right. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's been quite interesting. Uh, <laughs> I've got some stories, but <laughs> um, basically. Um, 14, 15 years ago, um, I found myself, it was, I think it was about early 2009, to be fair, so maybe 13 years ago, I uh, found myself in £52,000 worth of debt and a Coke problem as well. Um, you know, lack of money and debt and yeah. Coke kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, basically, I went into a debt management plan and I decided that something had to change. And it was clearly me, okay? The, I, I, I noticed that I was present at every single bad decision and bad event that happened in my life. Um, <laughs> so, so I kind of put the dots together and thought, I might be involved somehow. Um, so how and, did you get yourself, yourself out? What, what was the turning point? What made you think, right, end of? And you know, 52 is where I stop. I'm going to turn everything around. It was more, I don't, I don't really know. I just had enough. I, I was essentially, I was suicidal. Uh, it was, it was do something, okay, or tap out. Mm. And how I was living my life, for the first three seconds of the day, I'd wake up and everything was amazing. Mm. It was great for three seconds. And then I'd just remember all the mess that I'd gotten myself into. And I'd lay there and the dread would just come over me. Mm. And I would literally be working out how many hours it was going to be until I got back in bed and I was safe and I didn't have to manage or mm. do anything. Mm. And for me, quite literally, it my main job of the day was to make sure that I got back in bed. Mm. Yeah. And now, I mean, this was some time ago. But it's very apparent to me that there are a lot of people experiencing that very same feeling. Mm. And knowing what it feels like, I still remember it now. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it just goes through me. And it's a place I never want to go back to. Okay. And it hurts me. It upsets me to know that there are people out there today that are feeling like that. And as much as I made loads and loads of mistakes and I hurt people that, you know, I loved and I let down my kids, um, that some good can come out of those bad decisions and I can potentially help and impact and change the mindsets of those people. Because essentially what I found is, is that our net worth is directly in line with our self-worth. Oh, interesting. So you you worked on your sense of self-worth, do you feel? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. You know, I mean, I can successfully say that today I love being me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't want it to end. Uh, you know, in comparison, I used to dread getting out of bed. Now I can't wait to go to bed because I can't wait for the next day. Oh, yes, that's great. So at that stage... You you saw that you were at least 52 grand in debt. You had a cocaine problem. So you had to get rid of the cocaine problem and yeah. start working out the debt, working off the debt. So what did you do to get yourself onto those those tracks? Well, I mean, when I went into my original debt plan, um, it was going to take me 23 years to pay it off, um, which, you know, I can assure anybody listening, it took me far less amount of time to acquire that debt than it did to pay it off. <laughs> so it's uh, quite surprising how fast yeah. we can uh, build up that debt. And then it's like, oh my God, how's that happened? 
Um, so I, for a long time, what I actually did, I just was paying the minimum amount on it. Mm -hmm. And eight years ago, eight and a half years ago, I got into mortgage brokering. Um, I'd been insurance in insurance previously. Okay. So um, you had a start there in that, that area. Yes. Yeah. And I'd actually left the financial industry and I actually went and opened a gym, believe it or oh. not. Yeah. So uh, I owned a gym for 10 years. Excellent. Um, and then I sold that and I went back into, well, went back into the financial industry. One of the best decisions I ever made was that I didn't go bankrupt. I didn't go into an IVA because in the back of my mind, I was always like, well, I'm pretty good at the financial industry. If I need to in future, I want to be able to do that. And if you go into an IVA or you go bankrupt, you can't really do that. Okay. You can't go back into it. So for a long time, I, I kept on just paying the minimum amounts. Um, and then I'd say three and a half years ago, I really kind of zoned into it. Um, I started working with uh, my life coach, um, a guy called Paul Mort. Um, and that was really the defining moment. And what happened was my son ended up, um, he was looking at three to five years on a GBH charge. And he'd gone into a fight. And essentially, it was all my fault. Only in the way that he not really had a very good role model. Right, yeah. Okay. So it was three and a half years ago. But that was when I was really at my lowest. And the funny thing I'd noticed, and th this is what is really crazy. My business started doing really well. And I was earning more money. Everybody was telling me, I was like, you know, Richard, fantastic. You're great. We love you. Thanks for making our dreams come true. And what I found was, was that the better my business did, the worse that I felt. Interesting. So did you talk to your coach about it? Did you can't work through that? Yeah, yeah. And, and this is because my, my net worth was going up, but my self-worth was still down here. Mm -hmm. And so I was actually, I was still glued to my victim story, okay? Mm -hmm. The background was that my dad was an alcoholic, okay? And he died ooh, 21 years ago. And uh, when he died, he died in a tiny caravan with four, five, six black bin bags to show for his name. Okay. And I was what? 24 then. I'm 45 now. And as a child, we never went on um, family holidays. Not a single one. Um, my dad was an alcoholic. My mom, she was amazing. She worked three, four jobs just to feed us and keep everything going. And here was the weird thing. <laughs> You've got my mom today. She's like late 60s. She's got a caravan site. She's investing money in it. And I'm like, mom, slow down, go spend your money, chill out a bit. You know, I don't care if it comes to me. It's hers to spend and enjoy. But she won't. She loves it. Oh, so I've got my mum who's great with money, working three, four jobs, and I've got my dad who's an alcoholic living in a caravan, dies with nothing. And if you were to say to me, well, logically, come on, which one would be best to follow? I mean, it's quite clearly my mum. Yeah. So how come that didn't happen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this kind of tells me that logic. Okay, that isn't always the obvious thing. Yeah. And emotion actually is what makes things like money, eating, mm -hmm. relationships. Okay. Or it's emotions that actually cause all these problems because it interferes with our decision making. Yeah. So what I worked out was that if I better within myself and feel that I am worth more. Well, I should really then keep hold of my money. <laughs> you know, remember there's, we've seen lottery winners that, you know, they've won the lottery a few years down the line, they're bankrupt. They've spent it all. Mm -hmm. Essentially all that's happened is, okay. Is they found their way back to their natural level. Yeah. 
There's no management there. Okay, there's, and they don't actually win this money. They don't actually deserve it, or they feel they don't deserve it, because also they've not worked for it. They've got lucky. <laughs> yes, well, it's true, and and I do have various stories about lottery winners who've who've died or been murdered. Yeah. Because you know it's it's not necessarily a happy thing to have, but you you really pulled yourself out and you created a structure for yourself and for others as well. I mean, you you've yes. come up with yeah. a, a formula, if you like. Yeah, yeah, that that's right. I mean, it was just a, a thing, and, and what I'd get uh, mortgage clients come to me, I'd look at their bank statements, and I'm quite direct. Let's say <laughs> I can be. Um, uh, flavoursome with my language too so I'd have people come to me with their bank statements and I'll just be like what do you call this and they're like oh I knew you'd say something like that and the thing is all the brokers might just go well you've come to me for a mortgage that's not my business and I'd give them a mortgage and that's it and they'd do nothing to help with the habit that's going on but mm -hmm. for me when I've got data I can see habits a mile off mm -hmm. I've outed, or that's maybe the wrong word, I've helped um, gamblers, people with drug ha habits, um, they've had people admit to alcoholism just from the conversations that I've had, um, just by looking at their bank statements. You know, I can see it a mile off. And um, I just offered and helped and said to people, look, I've got this thing. And that's all it was. That's literally how I described it. Got this thing. I think it might help you. Do you want me to show you? And they'd be like, well, how much? I'm like, no, no, I just want to help you. So I'd show them it. And they'd be like, whoa, that's amazing. And six months later, I'd get pictures and messages going, oh, my God, Rich, thanks to you sharing that thing. <laughs> um, we've just been, there was one couple in particular. Um, who were between them earning 80 grand a year uh, in their 40s. They were both in debt plans. By the end of the month, they were borrowing money off mum and dad. Mm -hmm. And they're in their mid 40s. And I taught them what is now my five pot money formula. And within a year, they'd got, they'd paid off all their debts. They'd got um, a stack of money in the bank. They'd been to New York for this trip of a lifetime for one of those birthdays. They sent me pictures from all the sites that they went to see, and it was all bought and paid for up front. So what is your five-pot formula then? Well, so essentially all it is, is really simple, okay? <laughs> and this is the thing. I can give you it. A few amount of the people will actually put it into practice. Yeah. Mm. Okay? Majority. We'll, we'll hear it. We'll hear it. Anyway. Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. But the thing is, the majority of people won't. And this is what I've learned is that they need the mindset along with the theory, just like the overweight person. We all know it move more, eat less. Mm -hmm. well, if that's hard. the case. Why, why do we have a nation of overweight people? Mm -hmm. All right. If it was that simple, the strategy would do its job. It mm -hmm. doesn't. So this is where the mindset comes in. So essentially what it is, it's separating all your accounts. So you literally have five pots. And in the first instance, you're going to work with three pots. Okay. One of the problems which I see is that people don't know their numbers. They've got no track of their money. They use one bank account. Okay. Even businesses, self-employed people. All right. The business money going into the account that their pet insurance is going out of. And you're like, what are you doing? They don't know what money is theirs. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I get people to split three accounts okay the first one because the main priority of people uh normally is the the money that they spend mm -hmm. the second priority is their bills mm -hmm. hopefully sometimes paid on time <laughs> and then their savings trouble is when we have a priority of spends first bills second and Savings third, guess how much we tend to save? Nothing. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> so, you know, the, the theory of paying yourself first, mm -hmm. okay, 
which I talk well, about a lot. Yeah. Well, I take it a step further. Okay. Because it's really paying your future self first. True. Yeah. Okay. So I talk about, you know, people just say, you know, pay yourself first. But what does that really mean? But when we talk about it, paying your future self first, whoa, saving to most people, saving's boring. Ugh. <laughs> what do I want to save for? Yeah. All right. I haven't got anything to save for. Why do you need something to save for before you start saving? Wouldn't it be good to get to a point where you just saved anyway? Then one day you went, I want that. Oh, I've got the money. I'm going to buy it. Unreal. Okay. So that all we do is we change the perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because that is all mindset is. It's seeing things from a different view. Mm -hmm. So essentially, I just move the pots about. So firstly, you're going to pay your future self first. Secondly, you're then going to pay your bills. But what you do is you move all your direct debits to the day after you get paid. So they're going to go out immediately. Day you get paid, you pay your future to self first. Your, your salary goes into the account that all your bills go out of. You know what your bills is because you just work backwards. You have all the data that you need. Mm. It's all here. Don't give me excuses. <laughs> right, it's all here. Okay, you go back, you work out your outgoings, okay? Mm -hmm. And you then move what's left. That's what is yours to spend. Okay, people have no idea what is theirs to spend. Mm -hmm. So they go spending willy-nilly, and this is why they save nothing, and they miss bills. They, yeah. You know, they miss payments. Absolutely, and it's so true. And, and you know, what you've said is exactly what I say, but it's a, a, a not having the three different accounts. And that's a clever idea because, as you, as you say, you can see very clearly in these three accounts Correct. what you've got what you haven't got, essentially. Yeah, ab absolutely. And what I do is with the pain your future self, you open that up in a separate bank, okay? So right. a completely different bank. This is if you're single, okay? So right. Different rules. Right. So... If you're single, you, you what you'd do is you, you'd open up a separate bank account with a different bank and you don't get the phone banking app. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That way you've not got access to it. Good. Okay. <laughs> if you, as a couple, I would always suggest that you do these accounts jointly because the biggest problem, all right, one of the, if you think about all these people, uh, either gamblers, yeah. uh, drug problems, alcohol problems, all whatever ism they've got, Mm. Okay. The common trend is they have a bank account in their own name mm -hmm. and their partners know nothing. I've, I've recently, in the last two weeks, I've had a guy come to me, or actually a, a wife. Uh, a gentleman got fired due to alcoholism, um, lack of performance at work. He didn't tell his wife. Mm -hmm. He went and got loans, carried on pretending to go to work. Yeah. He then got defaults and CCJs. And then they've come to remortgage. And then it's all come out. I've spoken to women like that. And, and there's, there was one I remember who said it was like shoveling snow while there's a, an avalanche coming from behind. And she had no idea about that avalanche until suddenly yeah. it all broke. Mm. But here was the interesting thing. The call was with her. And all she did, understandably, was badmouth her husband. Mm. Because she was mad, right? Of course, yeah, I understand. Yeah, and I get that. But here's the thing. Imagine how that guy must have felt yeah. to go to the extent, the pressure, the anxiety, the overwhelm, okay, that he went to keep that hidden. He was banking on getting another job very quickly and nothing would, he would then just say, I've, I've got a new job. Mm -hmm. Okay? It would be seamless, but it didn't happen. So then imagine how the anxiety, the overwhelm and the panic would grow yeah. oh, to yeah. then be found out. And I actually spent two hours on the phone with this lady. I don't normally do that. And I basically said to her, "If imagine how he feels. And she was like, oh, my God, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now imagine he's not in this human adult man's body. Right? Imagine he's a five-year-old. What would you do to him? She went, oh, just give him, go up to him and give him a hug and tell him everything's okay. 
I said, well, here's the thing. He may be in that adult male body, but internally he's feeling like the scared five-year-old. Yeah. You've just saved their marriage. Absolutely. And potentially his life because the amazing thing was, and this was five o'clock on a Friday Mm -hmm. when we clock off, I was there at the office on the phone till about quarter past seven. I'd gone home and about nine o'clock, and I've never spoken to this guy. He found me on LinkedIn. He sent me a message and he went, sorry, mate. Um, I don't really know how to say it, but you've just spoke to my wife for two hours and she's just come downstairs, given me a hug and told me, I'm sorry, everything's going to be okay. And I don't know what you've said to her because I'm the one that's done everything wrong. Oh. And she's apologizing to me. And we message most days, me and this guy. And just to keep him on track, he's he stopped drinking. Okay, he feels amazing. He messaged me the other day. He's had a record sales day. Oh, good. You know, and, yeah. and, they're, and they're booked onto my next course. <laughs> so, th- this is all within a, a conversation. Imagine the changes that they're going to make together as a team moving forward. So the people who come on your course, they I mean, you've told us the three pots. There's the other two pots they get to learn about. Right, yeah. And but have you some found people don't get to them? No. <laughs> have you found that people who've been on your course have gone on to make really quite serious money? Yeah, well, it's not it's not about making serious money. So I don't sell a get rich scheme. Do you, you know what I mean? There's a lot of people out there right now selling courses that, you know, well, will drive your business and this and that. All right. I mean, my, my course currently is 347 quid to do it. Mm-hmm. It's not expensive and I don't want it to be expensive for the simple fact. Okay. The very people that need to do this course need to be able to afford it. Yeah. I've I've had business coaches telling me it should be five, six, seven, eight hundred quid. I should be charging two hundred pounds a month and this and that. I'm like, that doesn't that doesn't speak to me. In in here, I'm like, no, that, yeah. that's not what I'm that's not my mission. Okay. And two people can do the course, man and wife can do the course, but they don't have to pay twice. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what I do is I help you because if i think back to me this is the best way to explain it i was earning back then 75 grand a year wow that's good yeah Yeah, this this was when i was 24 25 wow gosh and then 20 years ago yeah and you ended up with 52 grand in debt that that's good spending (laughs) oh yeah well here's the thing jasmine most people think that more money is the answer to their problems it's not it's the curse to bigger problems because here's the thing you had to double my money and given me 150 grand a year, I'd have had 104 grand debt and a very, very sore nose. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And yeah. that and that's the truth. Yeah. If, if you can't handle 10 grand a year, you ain't managing 20. If you can't manage 20, you're not managing 50. If you can't manage 50, you're not managing a hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. Right? You're really not. Yeah. But more money is not the answer because all you're gonna do is more money comes in. Because you want more money, you're going to find a way for it to disappear. So what I try and do is I change people's mindsets to what you have now is enough. Because once we have gratitude for the enough that we have, we actually then allow more to come towards us. So true, isn't it? Gratitude, it really is riches. There's a there's a hymn um, I know which, which has a line: um, "Gratitude is riches, complaint is poverty." And the, the Chinese have a, a saying that um, uh, poverty is needing more or thinking. Absolutely, yeah. 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 I, I talk about this. There's a book, um, uh, "Conversations with with God." Okay, mm-hmm. it's yeah. it's an amazing book. Um, not strictly religious as such; it's more spiritual. Mm-hmm. And in one of the chapters, God talks about um, the wanting of more money. And he says, when people want more money, that's exactly what they get. Not more money, the wanting of more money. So by actual default, by continuously wanting more money, you're telling the universe you don't have enough. Yes, yes. But I feel more will only ever come to enough. 
And I start, I listened to something a couple of years ago. It was a Tony Robbins thing. And I remember I was taking my dog for a walk up the road. And um, it was a nice sunny day. And he told this story about leading a life of giving. Mm-hmm. And it filled me up listening to this story. And I was like, oh, my God, how good would it feel to every day just lead a life of giving? And I just decided to do that. Mm-hmm. And it just makes you feel amazing. And whether you get anything back, that's okay. It doesn't matter. Don't do things to get back. If you just genuinely do good things to help good people, then you, you're all good anyway. Well, it's clearly working with your course. I mean, of course, you've got your mortgage broking. And I guess from what you've said, some of your course members come through the mortgage broking because if they want a mortgage, you would say you can't have one, but I can help you get one if you improve your mor- your your money management. Yeah, yeah they're, are, they're are they awesome. Good? Do you have a website or anything like that? Um, th- there is, there's a, there's a landing page with details of the course and that's a, about it. Um, I've got a website for the mortgages, but essentially what happened was, um, I got a lot of, uh, men, um, saying that they were terrible with money. Mm-hmm. And, uh, this was in my coach, Paul Mort's network. <laughs> oh, and lovely. so, and so I was like, well, I've got this thing. And they were like, what is it? I, was like, I don't know, but it's a thing. And I'd I'd have a call with them on uh, on on FaceTime actually, and I got a whiteboard and I did this knocked up little presentation. What I did, I used to do on an A4 bit of paper, and it started off, and they were like, "Oh my god, this is absolutely amazing!" Good. And they told another guy, and then told another guy, and another guy, and I ended up doing two or three of these a day. Mm-hmm. So I spoke to my coach, and I was like, "Mate, you got to help me here. Your your clients are killing me, right?" <laughs> so. <laughs> He said, well, do a live presentation to over 100 men. So I did. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, all these men were like, this is amazing. When does the course start? I was like, there isn't a course. Mm-hmm. Just bugger off and leave me alone. I'm busy. There isn't a course. And then eventually they just kept bullying me and going, look, this needs to be a course. Mm-hmm. So I, I just put an, like a couple of Facebook statuses out bit of an advert going i'm gonna do this course it's eight weeks there you go this is the cost and 33 people signed up and i was like oh well, God. That's, that's brilliant for them but how how about you know anybody who's watching or listening to this podcast how do they find you and and do the course what what where should they go they they can find me on instagram uh mm-hmm. i'm on there uh on on uh facebook as right. well so yeah, just uh, Richard Crow, Richard Crow Mortgages, would, would that be? Yeah, enough? and there's Richard Crow um, mo- uh, Money Mindset Coach. That's the one you've caught me there. Okay, <laughs> and on there, uh, if you if you can join, add to ask. So it's Richard Crow Money Mindset Coach. Mm-hmm. And then what I've actually done it, in January, I I did a like a five day mini training. I did it live. It was all around money blocks. Okay. And I had loads of people do it and sign up. And then they were telling all the people, when, when are you doing it again? I was like, oh, I can't keep doing it um, because I was doing it live at night. Then that's five nights a week. So what I've actually done is I've recorded it so people can actually sign up to uh, my five-day free training. Mm-hmm. Okay, They get a little video. 15 10 to 20 minutes every day for five days there's a little tiny bit of homework but i teach people about money blocks and where our beliefs about money today actually come from so we investigate that okay because most people don't even know what money blocks are so so people can get that for free yeah absolutely oh that's good yeah so you can get that for free but then if you want the the live thing it's 350 quid is that right yeah yeah Mm-hmm. And yeah. what about mortgages? So mortgage broking, that that's that's just like anybody else's except for sure, yeah. Them. Yes. Yeah. I mean the mortgages, I mean that that's that's tough at the minute. Yeah. <laughs> busy, busy time, I bet. I are, are you yeah. able to I mean it, it must be changing every day. So are, are you able to actually complete mortgages with people at the moment, or is it just Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean the, the media hasn't helped, is mm. my opinion. You know, Sorry. all these all these people say mortgage offers have been pulled. I don't think, I don't know anyone that that's ever happened to. Mm. Okay. Because that, that is 
That's a specific term in the mortgage industry. Mm -hmm. And I think what's happened is on that is that people have inquired about a mortgage and the figures have just changed pre-application. Right. Okay. Now, post-application, when people have got mortgage offers, there isn't actually anybody that's lost them. Okay. So okay. It, it is happening. Things are moving. Um, and oh, people yeah. are managing to buy and sell. Because, you know, from, from what you'd hear, as you say, from, from the media, I think everything's just ground to a halt, practically. But yeah, I mean, has... rates, rates went up, obviously. But what the media isn't really telling us, they're coming down. Yes, I wondered if they might. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, you know, m most lenders dropped quite massively over the last two weeks. But you know, nobody it, takes any notice of that. That's not big news. <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. But, you know, they, they were uh, very quick to say when Halifax pulled all their uh, rates, which most lenders every yeah. couple of weeks pull their products. Well, yes, it, it was interesting because I was being asked, should people get a fixed rate now or should they wait? And I was saying, you know, you, you could go either way with a, with a, without a crystal ball. Um, but, you know, if it were me, I would wait. Um, it's a gamble, but I, I would wait because I just thought, you know, things are going to settle down. They might go up. They are. Drop, but to start off with, yeah, they'll settle yeah, down. And, and they are settling down. I think what actually happened is the, the banks went to, naught to a hundred worst case scenario overnight okay yeah. they've already leveraged in worst case scenario they've gone straight there mm -hmm. and now what's happening is with their fixed rates they are reducing them okay mm -hmm. because yes. they've they've then actually realized they've gone, hold on the they've made the right actions things are calming down you know um so there's less panic well, it sounds to me that that explains that that describes what you've done things are calming down You've got yeah. yourself, you've got on top of things for yourself, and now you're helping other people get on top of their money. Um, and you can do it for free with your if, if we go onto your Richard Crow Money Mindset LinkedIn, and you could also do the the paid version, which sounds very yeah. good as well. Richard, this has been fantastic. Thank you yeah. so much. That's Thank so you fun. so much for your honesty and for your help. I think it's going to be really helpful for a lot of people because I do hope so. Through, yeah, what you've been through is what so many have. It's it's been wonderful to have you. Thank you, Richard. I've been speaking to Richard Crow, Richard Crow's Money Mindset, Richard Crow Mortgages and Insurance, and this has been the Money Magpie Podcast. Like us, uh, tell all your friends, comment, share, you know, all that kind of stuff that we're supposed to do and people forget. So do it now. Like it now. Share it now. Comment. Do all of that. And we'll see you at the next one.